Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Welcome to Policy and Rights, the show about human rights and government policy. Thank you for listening. Today is March 7th, uh, 2020. And um, we have a message uh, from Justin Trudeau. And Justin Trudeau also was talking about different companies that are willing to step up to the plate and help produce um, personal protective gear and um, life-saving measures to help us get through uh, this pandemic COVID-19. So let's take a listen to that. My thoughts are with Prime Minister Johnson and his family during this time. I've worked with Boris for some time now, and I know how committed he is to serving the people of the UK. He's a fighter, and he will be fighting now to regain his health and get back to the job he loves. Sophie and I and all Canadians are wishing him a speedy recovery. To our British friends, Canadians stand with you. We will get through this together. Chaque fois qu'on apprend que quelqu'un a été hospitalisé en raison de la COVID-19, ça nous inquiète. Mais on doit se rappeler qu'on n'est pas impuissant face à la situation dans laquelle on se trouve en ce moment. Tout le monde veut contribuer à la, situation, à la solution. Vous savez quoi faire. Restez chez vous le plus possible, même quand il fait beau dehors. Je sais que c'est encore plus difficile ces jours-ci avec l'arrivée du printemps, mais il faut continuer de suivre les consignes maintenant Si on veut avoir des chances de pouvoir profiter de l'été dans quelques mois. Sortez seulement si vous avez besoin de faire l'épicerie et encore là, essayez d'y aller le moins possible. Ça s'applique à tout le monde, peu importe où vous vivez ou ce que vous faites dans la vie. Cela dit, certaines personnes sont en mesure d'en faire encore plus parce qu'elles possèdent des compétences ou des ressources dont on a besoin en ce moment. Par exemple, on offre des emplois à temps plein aux réservistes des forces canadiennes. Comme ça, si nos communautés ont besoin de plus de soutien, on sera prêt. Santé Canada recrute aussi des bénévoles pour prêter main forte à nos travailleurs de première ligne. Et, il y a quelques semaines, on a demandé de l'aide à des entreprises pour produire des articles qui sont très en demande. Depuis, près de 5000 entreprises canadiennes ont communiqué avec nous pour offrir leurs services. De la part de tous les Canadiens, merci. C'est vraiment inspirant de voir tant de gens qui veulent contribuer. Over the past few weeks, almost 5,000 Canadian companies have stepped forward to help fight COVID-19. On behalf of all Canadians, thank you for stepping up. As countries around the world grapple with this pandemic, the demand for critical supplies like test kits, ventilators, and personal protective equipment is going up. To keep our frontline workers safe and care for Canadians with COVID-19, we need a sustainable, stable supply of these products, and that means making them at home. With our plan to mobilize industry, we're helping companies retool, repurpose, and innovate to fight COVID-19. We've already signed letters of intent with a number of partners to produce the things we need, and today we have more good news to share. We're working with Thornhill Medical, CAE, Ventilators for Canadians, and a group led by Starfish Medical to produce up to 30,000 made in Canada ventilators. These purchases will help increase our capacity to make sure these life-saving machines are, are made right here at home. We're also working with Nobel Prize winning researcher Dr. Art McDonald, who is leading a team of scientists to develop ventilators that are easy to make. And to produce medical gowns and establish new supply chains right here in Canada, we're teaming up with over 20 companies, including Arcteryx, Canada Goose, and Stanfields. One thing that is particularly inspiring to see is just how many companies are not just producing these goods, but innovating. For example, AutoLive is looking to make medical gowns out of material they'd normally use to produce airbags. 
En même temps, notre gouvernement continue d'acheter des masques pour protéger nos professionnels de la santé qui font un travail extraordinaire. On a commandé des millions de masques chirurgicaux auprès de plusieurs compagnies canadiennes et on appuie l'entreprise Medicom qui va augmenter sa capacité de production de masques N95. On achète également du désinfectant pour les mains et Santé Canada a autorisé la vente de plus de 85 de ces produits aux Canadiens. Certains articles vont prendre plus de temps à fabriquer que d'autres, mais à chaque semaine, on franchit des étapes importantes pour augmenter notre capacité de production. Et je tiens à remercier le ministre Baines qui fait un excellent travail sur ça ces jours-ci. Je sais que plusieurs personnes s'inquiètent une pénurie, pénurie de matériel pour regarder ce qui se passe dans d'autres pays et je comprends vos préoccupations, surtout si vous ou un proche travaillez dans le milieu de la santé. Je veux vous assurer qu'on fait tout ce qu'on peut pour éviter que ça se produise. Our government is working around the clock to ensure that our frontline workers have everything they need to save lives and stay safe. While we're working to secure critical equipment from Canadian sources, We're also in touch with other suppliers around the world who want to sell to Canada. We're expecting 500,000 masks from 3M tomorrow, and we're working as fast as we can to get them to our frontline workers. From the outset, our priority has been the health and safety of all Canadians. So whether you're making medical gowns, delivering ventilators, or treating a patient with COVID-19, we have your back. We're going to be there for you. We also have a three-point economic plan. It supports business owners, including through new loans, while safeguarding jobs with the wage subsidy and helping those who no longer have a paycheck with the CERB. Yesterday evening, our government proactively shared our proposed legislation on wage subsidy with opposition parties. I know House leaders will be speaking throughout the day to reach an agreement for the House of Commons to quickly pass this legislation which will give much-needed financial support to Canadian workers while helping employers to keep their staff on the payroll. A lot of work has been done since we announced our plan to subsidize wages. We continue to rely on your input and feedback as we add back as we refine it, and we'll have more details to share very soon. Yesterday was also the first day people could apply to receive the CERB. On that note, I want to recognize the tremendous work done by the public service who processed hundreds of thousands of claims. They're working around the clock to get Canadians the help they need as quickly as possible. And I also want to remind everyone that if you were born in April, May or June, today's the day you can apply. Finally, as some of you will know, today marks World Health Day and National Caregiver Day. This year, I'm especially grateful for our healthcare professionals and caregivers who are working day and night to keep us safe and to care for our most vulnerable. As Canada confronts this pandemic, many have pointed to our healthcare system as a major asset. Ours is a right rather than a privilege, and that's something of which we can all be proud. But our healthcare system is only as strong as the people it employs. Whether you're a doctor or a nurse, someone who keeps our hospital clean or a home care worker, thank you for taking such good care of us. Thank you for everything you've done over the years to help so many of us start a family, overcome an illness, and enjoy longer, healthier lives. We do not need a pandemic or a special day to recognize your essential contributions to this country, but I hope all Canadians will join me in expressing our deepest gratitude. I hope Canadians honk a little out louder when your shift ends today and add another rainbow to their window. Du fond du cœur, merci à tous nos aidants naturels et à nos professionnels de la santé. Merci. The Prime Minister also makes a brief statement uh, to answer a question from the National Post about um, the number of ventilators actually being told up and being made. Um, the numbers de seems may seem a bit high, but uh, as Justin Trudeau explains, the uh, number makes sense when you also consider what needs to happen globally. 
Thank you. Merci. The next question is from Christopher Nardi from the National Post. The line is now open. La parole est à vous. Good morning, Mr. Prime Minister. Um, I want to come back quickly. You mentioned earlier that uh, a group of companies are going to be teaming up to produce 30,000 made in Canada ventilators. Does that mean that you expect that we're going to need to use at the very least 30,000 ventilators uh, throughout this pandemic? What we've uh, said from the very beginning is we need to be ready for uh, any circumstances and every circumstances. And the opportunity uh, to make sure that we have uh, ventilators available if we need them is going to be extremely important. So uh, we have told these companies across the country who've put up their hands uh, to go ahead and get building ventilators as quickly as possible and as many as possible in case we need them in Canada. We certainly hope that we won't be needing all those ventilators, uh, but we also know that there are countries around the world where they are not able to tool up uh, local production to create more ventilators. They're going to be uh, reliant on a global supply that's already stretched thin. And if we end up making more ventilators than Canada needs because Canadians continued to stay social distancing, continue, continued uh, to follow best health advice, that'll be great news. Uh, and we will have ventilators to share with other countries that are facing more difficult circumstances. For us, uh, doing more right now, doing quicker right now, uh, is really the only option. Next we have um, Adrian Dixon, Bonnie Henry, um, speaking about um, what is going on here in British Columbia with COVID-19 and some updates, number of cases, number of beds being used, that sort of thing, so that we understand um what is truly happening um also i want to add to this is not going to be in this next statement um but uh according to um the Surya leader um that efforts are being made to convert a rec center into a shelter for homeless people uh so they have safe safe places to go uh during this crisis and it's really important that we protect um the, the most vulnerable people in our society, it, they they truly need our help. And um, the city of Surrey converting a um, rec center into a facility where homeless people can be is a great step. Good afternoon. I'm Adrian Dix, BC Minister of Health. To my right is Dr. Bonnie Henry, the Provincial Health Officer for British Columbia. We're honored to be here on the territories of the Lekwungen-speaking people of the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. I wanted to lay out what the schedule for briefings will be over the next few days and through the Easter weekend. Uh, tomorrow and Thursday, those briefings will be at 3 o'clock. On Friday, around 3 o'clock, we'll, um, uh, we'll send out a prepared statement, which will update you on the facts of that day. On Saturday at noon, Dr. Henry will be here uh, briefing. And then the following briefing will be Monday at 3 o'clock. So that gives you a sense of what the schedule will be for the next week. And with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Bonnie Henry. Thank you, and good afternoon. Uh, so this is our update on the COVID-19 situation here in British Columbia. Uh, for today, we have uh, 25 new uh, test positive cases here in BC. A total number of cases of 1,291. That includes 603 people in the Vancouver Coastal Health Region, 458 at the Fraser Health Region, and the no change in the other three health regions 79 on Vancouver Island, 128 people in Interior Health, and 23 people in Northern Health. We also have no new long-term care outbreaks today. We remain with 21, and currently there are 213 people in long-term care who have uh, tested positive COVID-19. That's 132 residents and 81 staff people. Uh, right now, there are 138 people hospitalized with COVID-19 in, in British Columbia, and of those, 66 are in intensive care unit or critical care units. We have, um, sadly, another four people who have died from COVID-19 in the last day here in BC, three people in Vancouver Coastal Health and one in the Fraser Health region. And 805 people have fully recovered and are no longer in isolation. 
So as we're all aware, there are a number of, of important religious celebrations that are coming up in the, in the coming weeks, starting tomorrow, really, and in the coming days. And many of us, mi millions around the world of many faiths, will be celebrating these major religious holidays. And we'll be celebrating in, um, collectively around the world in ways we've never done before in many cases. Our faith leaders, and we had a call with a, with a number of faith leaders from across BC again this morning, um, are also community leaders and people that we look to for guidance at these times when we're in crises, but also when uh, we have times of these religious celebrations. And I am so happy to see and have been so impressed by how much they have shown through their actions that we can still celebrate and care for those around us in virtual ways. And as a matter of fact, many more people during this time are finding ways to connect with people online through their religious faith, um, through many different religious faiths. And I encourage people to continue to look for those um, connections online. We've heard that many, many places have um, areas uh, uh, online that people can connect to. So I would encourage you to find those numbers. The followers and congregations around the province here in British Columbia, please, now is our time that we need to pay special attention to our elders and seniors. Our elders hold our history, our language, and our traditions, and are a precious part of our communities around this province. And through these celebrations over the coming weeks, please keep that in mind so that we can maintain our safe distance to protect them. We protect them by connecting safely from a distance. And that is an important thing for us all to remember. This is also a time, I know, when many people will be thinking of traveling and going to perhaps holiday homes or smaller communities around the province. And I'm really am imploring people, this is not our time to do that right now. We need to avoid all non-essential travel, and it's important that we don't go to communities where we might not have the resources to support us if we become sick or if there's a medical emergency. So now is the time to stay home, to stay connected with our family, to stay connected virtually. I also want to say that you know, group celebrations inside are also problematic at this time. And while we have an order that uh, prohibits people gatherings of more than 50, right now, when we know that this virus continues to circulate in our communities, coming together of even small groups can be very problematic. And if you are uh, coming together as a small group, maintaining those distances, making sure you're doing the things we need you to do, like cleaning your hands regularly, making sure you're covering your cough, that if you are feeling at all unwell, that you do not go and do not um, bring this into an environment with others. I also want to say um, today is, is World Health Day, which is a WHO um, day where we talk about awareness of health around the world. And I, I can't imagine more people being aware of health at this point in the world right now. But many people we know in British Columbia are managing chronic disease and other health issues. And I can encourage you to continue to work with your health care providers, to talk to your physician's office, your primary care provider's office, or if you don't have a primary care provider, to talk to for us and a very solemn day for people in D.C. For, uh, for four more deaths we're announcing today, bringing the total of some total of deaths to 43, and we want to pass on um, to the families of, of those people, to their co-workers, of their friends, of their communities, our uh, deepest condolences. One of the challenges, I think, in, in this time, and we all feel this because we all know people in community who have passed away 19, that this is a time sometimes when we're not able to reach out in the kinds of ways to one another and express our grief in the kinds of ways that we usually do number of additional cases today and uh, a decline in the number of hospital cases just um, for people who are interested in hospital cases there are currently 59 in the Fraser Health Authority 51 in the Vancouver Coastal Health Authority 13 in Interior Health 11 in Vancouver Island Health and 4 in Northern Health that's for a total of 138 which is down from yesterday and uh, as well the number of people in ICU is also uh, 
down from yesterday to 66. Uh, I want to put this in the context of what's happening in our healthcare system. Today, for example, we have 4,549 5, empty beds in healthcare. That's 58.1% capacity overall and 50.9% capacity in critical care beds, which means that we've made very significant steps to prepare, as we said from the beginning, to prepare for the worst and fight and work hard together for the best of circumstances. I want to thank everybody who's working in healthcare. Um, I want to highlight in particular, again, those that keep our hospitals clean and ensure that people who are in hospital and are working in hospital have access uh, to food uh, and uh, who do the laundry and other jobs in healthcare, which are absolutely essential to the success of everyone. They are valuable and we so admire and so appreciate in these times the work that you do. I wanted to um, say a couple of other things. The first of all that we've had, uh, continue to have more people uh, rejoin the professions to assist us. That's now 56 doc uh, physicians, 808 pe 80 people, 880 people involved in nursing, including registered nurses and nurse practitioners and registered psychiatric nurses and LPNs and, register and registered care aides. Rejoin the profession for, uh, for a significant, uh, just those two categories, plus 30 uh, re-registrants re in the allied health professions, all of which all of whom are participating to help us do uh, what we need to do. I want to note uh, with respect to um, uh, protective equipment, personal protective equipment that we have had, we have received two major um, uh, shipments that British Columbia is involved in. One landed on Sunday and one landed on Tuesday. And what we're doing now is a new part of the process for us because we've gone, had to go outside some of our pr traditional supply channels in order to obtain PPE as we do, go through an extensive uh, process of testing and that's what's going on right now. I want to acknowledge, as Dr. Henry did, the, all the faith leaders in BC, 130 who participated in a telephone call with the Premier, with uh, Dr. Henry and myself uh, uh, just a couple of hours ago. And uh, to reiterate what Dr. Henry said, certainly we said it on the call and faith leaders said it as well on the call, is that this, there has never been a time when we have to reach out to, uh, to one another more virtually, to touch base with each other more on the phone or through the internet or through FaceTime or whatever that might be, through services that are virtual. Uh, n never a more important time, but also that in this time of major religious events that people need to uh, not come together in large groups and certainly not to come together inside even in smaller groups. Finally, I just want to reiterate um, this weekend, um, at least here in Victoria and I know in Vancouver, uh, the weather is uh, maybe the best weather of the year we have, but this is not the weekend to travel to second homes and to cottages. Let's enjoy the, uh, as much as we can under these circumstances what we have here and the many blessings we have here, but let's enjoy them uh, uh, without traveling and uh, that there be no, um, no uh, non-essential travel or we certainly would actively discourage it. This is the 12th week uh, uh, Dr. Henry and I have been doing COVID-19 briefings. We started earlier with this, I think, than others. And we made it uh, BC's effort. And all of you know, though, that it knows no borders and neither does our response to it. Being 100% uh, all in requires a lot of all of you. It will this weekend, it continues to, but we need it now more than ever. When there's some evidence that we are flattening the curve, we need to double down now. It demands, I think, what's best of us, what's best of BC, our strength and our courage and our generosity, our empathy and our kindness. It requires all those things and that good practice and good learning and good luck flow from these qualities. So let's bend the curve, not bend the rules this weekend. Let's continue to be 100% all in. Let's remain committed to our collective effort to, uh, to stop the transmission of COVID-19. And with that. Okay, so we heard um, best advice from Adrian Dixon and Dr. Bonnie Henry um, about traveling, I know it's we're coming up with uh, Passover and Easter and 
traditionally we all have large gatherings. Church, I mean, churches are filled. The, the synagogues are filled. It, uh, the the Passover Seder um, is a large celebration where we gather whole families together and everything. And we just heard um, the advice not to have these gatherings, not to travel to the cottage or um, and to and to actually stay home. So, um, in order to to not spread the virus, uh, here in Canada in British Columbia, we're very lucky. We don't have the number of cases. And the, we heard the advice in order to keep it that way. We need to to stay home. And there are ways that we can actually celebrate um, with our families, um, even, the, even our extended families, using... Uh, online techniques and things like that. So um, we probably sh should actually uh, look into those and figure the those things out so that we can ride this COVID-19 wave through. And with that, um, I, I have uh, some relationship advice from uh, a relationship expert uh, who's a friend of De Depictions Media, uh, Julie Koufax. And she's going to tell us, give us some advice that will actually extend beyond COVID-19 and help us actually have better relationships with those who are very intimate with us. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with Julia Kovax. Julia is dedicated to empowering everyone to live life orgasmically. She accomplishes this by working with men and women individually and in groups to overcome their past condition, conditioning related to intimacy. The goal is to teach people how to live, orgas live an orgasmic life each moment of their waking hour. Julia works to change things the paradigms of the public perception of sex ev evolving from shameful junk sex to sacred gourmet sex. <laughs> As an intimacy coach, she will give you, give you hands-on training and gently guide you through your own or couple sexual blocks to open the doors to your bliss. <laughs> now, I heard you giggling there, Julia. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank um, you. Thank you. So, so um, right now, I I know a lot of us have, have not been able to do any of the, the group things that go along with our business. Um, right. And I'm <laughs> sure that some of that has disappeared from your business at the same time. But that doesn't mean that we can't have intimacy, right? Absolutely. In fact, uh, I think this is an an incredible opportunity to deepen our intimacy, um, whether you are on your own uh, to yourself and whether you are with a partner or with a family uh, in quarantine. Um, oftentimes, we really don't have this kind of time that we can actually just spend endless hours if we want and pay attention to ourselves what's going on within us and also just ask questions and talk to our uh, those who are like partnered uh, with us whether they are by by choice or by force but uh, they are in the same space and uh, how amazing this is um, I think this is an amazing opportunity yeah now of course we, we most of, most of us are aren't um, because, like you said in, your, in the intro, a lot of our conditioning and things like that is it's it's go may get in the way of us being able to fully take advantage of that opportunity. Yes, uh, yes. Well, that's the thing uh, that a lot of times we don't recognize is that. Um, uh, we are truly craving intimacy, we are truly craving to connect to uh, another human being 
and also to understand ourselves better and our bodies and our functioning and through our childhood and through our education and society uh, unfortunately those are not areas that we were given opportunities to really really understand we don't spend much time in school understanding our body anatomy biology how it works and mm -hmm. and the intimacy how you touch a girl how you touch a boy uh, our sexuality our sensuality is not primary subjects in school and yet that's what really keeps us alive that's what keeps us excited that's what one you know like that the 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 spark and that buzz whatever we do like i'm looking outside and you know people are now not going anywhere they're not doing the doing part we are just being and and to find ourselves now um stripped from our busyness and the idea of busyness uh now we have a chance to actually look inward and and spend this intimate like truly intimate time because no one is in your space it's just either only you or your pets and your family and how are we going to do that when we don't have the tools and the skills um taught to us really this is an opportunity where um yeah i mean there's a lot of things online but this is an opportunity to read books to ask really good questions from each other for instance um, I don't know, like, how do you spend your time uh, uh, with your wife uh, during this time? Well, um, actually, we, we're, when I'm not actually broadcasting um, or, or reporting on what's going on with the, with the virus, uh, we're, we're cuddled on the couch binge-watching DVDs. <laughs> Lovely, yes. And, and it's, it's stuff that, that, that we're both, like, really into, right? Um, mm hmm yeah, so, so you're watching, so you're watching movies, and do you uh, do you spend time ever like just not doing anything uh, in a sense that not having an outside interest, just like ask each other questions, for instance, or how do you deepen your deepen your connection during this time? Do you find it any different? Is it? Um, um, we, we we actually, uh, I would I would say say this that. Um, that we do sit and discuss things. Mm -hmm. It's like um, there's uh, also time that we do, that we have have together because part of uh, part of our uh, of this business is also distribution of the news door to door, okay. and it and right now that's named as we're going to put in quotation marks as an essential service delivering. Right. Uh, different uh newspapers and things like that to people's doors um so during that time we also have discussions about um how to make our lives be better um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know di discussions around um what politics you know th different things are just happening in our world that we can just talk about during that time because right. it it takes takes a few hours to get all that done and it's like and there's no there's no i should say there's no distraction from television or screens it's right. just the two of us working together right right and since it's more menial, your brain mm -hmm. wants to work also, and mm -hmm, because you're both highly intelligent people, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, sure, so that's course. that's one of the but ways that we do it. You know, yeah, the intellectual intellectual stimulation is mm -hmm. uh, is helping you to connect to each other. That's what you're saying. So so what? So how about like the intimate communication? Uh, so there are there are questions that I sometimes encourage couples to do, um, like you know, tell me something you like about me. Like we were like with my with my uh, partner, we like decided to just gonna spend time just saying nice th nice things to each other. You know, that kind of like 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 it, it's it's a system to get your nervous system used to like just hearing nice things and nice and loving things. Uh, especially during this time when there is lots of fears that could uh, come up, and I think maybe that's what I would like to focus on with you, like how we can suggest people to not get into parts of their head where 
where the fear is lurking and making you stressed out. Mm -hmm. So how can you consciously pull yourself out of those areas and uh, and focus on the nice things? Because pleasure and feeling good is super important right now, um, as it is uh, medicine to the soul and it makes us feel better. So you can create that on your own or with a lover. You can ask, like, you know, Mm -hmm. tell me, tell me, you know, the ways that you like me or things that you love about me or things that you love that I do for you. So those are the, those are the, you know, there's specific questions you can ask of each other that maybe you don't have time other times or you don't think about it that you can do at this time and uh, get kind of deeper layers of intimacy. Well, let me ask you this overall how in i mean how important is is that to to a relationship it's absolutely fundamental not uh, not everyone has very i realize though not everyone has really deep relationships sometimes people live together and they're kind of strangers to each other uh because they don't ask those questions and um and they get lost in the mundane and then when they try to make love or get close it's like you know it's almost like you're a stranger with a strange body uh i think um intimacy physical intimacy and sexual intimacy and emotional intimacy uh is very important but we don't actually think about those as separate uh, categories we just think of intimacy as sex mm-hmm. and um, <clears throat> and actually it's just part of it uh intimacy is Often people joke about it. It's like into me see. So I open myself up to you uh, in intimate ways. And sometimes people think of that as sharing secrets. And well, not necessarily sharing secrets, but I, uh, that's not always the case. But more about things you are ashamed of or things you are embarrassed to say. And sometimes it's it's... It's nice things, like we talked about this, like, you know, when you want to criticize somebody, it's always easy to say, like, oh, you don't do this or you don't do that. But we don't say the 99% of other things that we think the other person is doing right. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think that's how we are creating intimacy when we are making the other person feel safe and comfortable around us. And if they feel like that we, li- we genuinely like them and like the way they think, like you said, you're working with your wife and it all works really well and say like, oh, it is so fun working with you. Um, it's so great how we get things done. It's so great how we think about different things um, and we share it with each other and that makes me feel closer to you. Like just use those words, which we often don't. I certainly were not in <coughs> conscious of using though that kind of language, but uh it's compliments to a human is like water to a plant and we tend to forget it especially in long-term relationship and we tend to forget it with each other as well you look in the mirror it's like oh my god instead of looking instead looking in the mirror it's like oh my, oh my god i you know like here i am i lived this long to 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 see uh quarantine and now the world is changing and look at it as an opportunity which which it truly is an opportunity for us to stop for a second and make a choice. Do you want to go down on the rabbit hole of fear and negativity uh, and doubt, or you have a choice? No, I'm going to take this opportunity to really enjoy my wife, my dog, my family. I call a friend. I exercise. I read a book. So those are that's the opportunity here, and and that choice. And to understand that this choice is always available to us, even when we are not in quarantine. We're just not. Uh, in a habit of doing it and uh, the world had come to a screeching halt where Mm -hmm. we actually gonna have time to develop this muscle and and develop this deeper intimacy with each other with the world around us with nature as it's all blooming right now in the spring and really just slow down and take time to enjoy that enjoy being alive I, I like I like some of what you're saying is like changing habits and exercising mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. the 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 muscles in mm-hmm. the, in our it, because if uh, I'm gonna put this rephrase this a little bit because it almost sounds like you're saying that there's uh, muscles to our mentality our emotions as well yeah. as our physical being right yes absolutely yes yes there are those are muscles that we haven't really 
exercised because it's not not a focus in our society to exercise those muscles. Uh, it, it's you know in our in our society what doesn't make you money doesn't really get exercised, and <laughs> uh, so the, you know so that's really usually the primary focus. It's like okay I'm going to go to school because I'm going to get a job and I'm going to make money, mm-hmm. and and it's and it's rarely for the purpose of oh I'm just going to do this because I enjoy it, uh, and uh, and without getting too geeky about it, science now has proven that we are actually wired for pleasure. Things that we do is for pleasure. We have telomeres and end of our DNA, which elongates if we actually have more pleasure in our body. You know that, f- and and when you experience pleasure, uh, you have this flood of, of hormones uh, in your body that makes you feel that you're really gooey, awesome feeling. Those that actually puts us into uh, the parasympathetic nervous system of this calming down state, and from that point, we, all our decisions. Are are actually better decisions than than being in that rushed, fearful, anxious, stressed state. So yes, it absolutely is, mm-hmm. so to speak, a muscle uh, that we need to exercise, and that muscle is the muscle of relaxation, uh, not the muscle not the muscle of the tightness and contraction, uh, but it's the muscle of relaxation. The more we relax, and so when do we relax more? When we feel safe. Uh, when we feel loved, when we feel warm, when we feel comfortable, and you can create that environment uh, within yourself, and you can also create it within your par- with your partner. You know, like if you walk into a family environment where there is a lot of fighting, there has been a lot of name calling, there has been physical fights or anger or or resentment. You know, people are anxious and they are on edge and they don't know. You know, they just want to leave. But if there's an environment you walk in and there's like smiles and hugs and, you know, and, and lovely conversations and lots of like, oh my God, you look so great and remember when and whatever and how do you feel about this? And like there's lots of openness and respect and that's the environments we feel safe. And in that open, safe environment, then we can open up more and, and, and we can open our hearts more and, and then that pleasure kind of runs through your body. And in and then you you can get creative. You can get super creative about how you're going to spend now time together. It's when people then drop into the play. It's not a fight anymore. Now you're playing, playing in this world like children in the sandbox, uh, playing because for no other reason other than just it's fun. And how we can make our our world joyful and fun, and incredibly and miraculously the money follows and mm-hmm. i think this is this is the opportunity right now for all of us to actually see that happening and uh they say it takes 21 days for the habit to to um uh get set so we actually can practice this in our lives whereas um if this was only would have happened for three days or for a week, you know, like it's like going away on a weekend, you get a break from your habits, or you go away on a holiday, and you know, you're having a great time, but then it's over, and then you come back, you drop back into your habits, back to the mundane, perhaps you are refreshed for a few days, lingering memories of holiday. Now, we have a chance to actually take more time. Maybe we're going to get to the 21 days. In fact, it looks like that we will. So you can actually consistently... Uh, do the same thing over and over and create new habits, new habits of exercising, new habits of eating, cleaning out your fridge, throwing out food that you don't need. I mean, I, you know, I think a lot of people overeat, overeat at the beginning and now you're like, hmm, you got to a point, but do I really need to eat this much? Do I really need to cook this much? I want to move yeah. my body, yeah. you know, all of those things. And, um, and then you, and then the connection to the other human being who is with you in this situation or to yourself I don't want to discount and diminish the idea that a lot of people are also by themselves and it might be really really difficult for them um, there are there are resources they can reach out uh, phone people have conversations go out for a walk um, connect to nature those are all really good ways to nourish our soul during this time yeah, because I mean, we we may not be able to get within 
six feet of another like mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. if we were we were to actually meet face to face right now we'd have to stay six feet away from each other because right. we don't live in the same house yeah. together right. but my wife and i we can be as close and and cuddle together and and all that all mm -hmm. that sort of all the all the physical closeness but mm -hmm. um Physical closeness is good, but but as you were saying, that we also need to find that emotional and mental closeness too, right? Yes, yes, because really, uh, if you are, you know, referring to like physical, sexual intimacy, mm -hmm. it starts in it starts in the brain, right? So it's very difficult to just jump into bed and really uh, connect uh, sexually to another person if you haven't haven't had that emotional and mental closeness already set like that that starts much earlier than the actual you know physical urge so yeah so how to create that more so there's more openness and more invitation and more enjoyment and exploration of each other and each other's body and uh, so there's, there can be a lot of communication and you can um, you know ask each other well, how do you want to be loved what kind of uh, lover you want to be um, in your in your mind? Like, if you wanted to be a better lover, what would that look like? Like, to have these conversations and actually com think about it and communicate it to each other. Do you like when I do this? Uh, like, the other night with my uh, partner, we decided to have a date night, and we didn't go out. We just, you know, got dressed up, and uh, we, we got dressed up in our nice clothes. We put makeup. Mm -hmm. I did my hair, and, you know, and he did too. We didn't go anywhere, and then we just found, like, awesome music. We made, like, this awesome dinner, and it was like going out, and we were we wore shoes, and we were dancing, and, and uh, you know, and then I just, you know, I did a little lap dance for him, and it was fun. <laughs> So you, know, you can be really creative, like, what do you want to do? Um, and really, nobody's watching, so it's just the two of you, so you can do whatever you want to do. You're not out on the dance floor. You know, the people are always saying, like, dance like nobody's watching. Well, nobody's watching now. So, um, but you can still make it fun. He, he got these beautiful flowers. We decorated the place. So, you know, you can, you can do the pajamas, but you can also snap out of it and schedule your time and do other stuff. Uh, we exercise, we went for a walk, uh, you know, we asked these questions from each other, uh, we try different uh, uh, things that we haven't tried before, um, blindfolds and, you know, sensory exercises and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff you can, you know, you can take a long bath. We can give each other massages, like just a lot of things that that you know. When do we have this kind of time, <laughs> you know, for each yeah. other? Right? Yeah, lavish our bodies and uh, and and then you 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 know like you realize which I which we realize that we just we just in you know, areas that we haven't really even talked about or touched in each other physically and mentally and emotionally. Like it all gets kind of clearing up the cobwebs of areas and it feels good and then you just get more relaxed into it and whatever is happening outside when you come from this place of like complete um, nourishment you can you can face it better right and and it's going to be challenging for a little while out there but you know, compared to other Cities and countries, we are doing really well here. So it's another thing that we do. We just count our blessings every day here yeah. of how lucky we are that uh, we are not not ill. We have a beautiful place and a beautiful city to uh, to go through this this time that's much more challenging for a lot of people around the world. And so to really really feel feel deep gratitude for our life and where we are right now, and we are. You know, we couldn't be here without millions of others who have uh, died along the way to get us here. So I think we all need to be very aware of the of how incredibly blessed and lucky we are uh, in our lives. And coming from the deep state of gratitude, um, yeah, everything everything becomes like you know just uh, the cherry on top. 
And you know, this is not to say that you know that my work hasn't disappeared, and I have any idea where I'm going to make money with. And somehow, I just feel incredibly calm about that, um, and not freaking out, um, because creativity will will be around, and lots of new ideas will come around as well uh, and come out of this. We just need to pivot. Uh, and and we don't know how this things is going to go, and it's going to become clearer and clearer. But this is an incredible time, and I would encourage everyone out there to use this time for getting ready for when it's over. Then you have maybe develop a skill of some kind, you know, learning how to play the piano or the guitar or whatever. You know, there's mm-hmm. lots of YouTube channels, like lots of things you can do. Yeah, lots of things you can do. Um, yeah. Anything in particular you're curious about, um, Michael? That because uh, I can well, go into many different directions. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we, we're 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 going to start to run short on time. So one, mm-hmm. um, I want you to to tell everybody the best ways to actually get a hold of you because you have some really good information with this, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and if you could list like a few few tips that people should should uh, should try in during this time just to just to get more intimate with with their partner and more intimate with themselves right um, <clears throat> yeah so I would say the um, the important thing is uh, to really spend time like looking at each other looking each other's eyes, saying hello, when you, when you walk by each other, just like, you know, caress each other, just keep like contact and, and, uh, and say good morning and, and maybe plan your day together when you get up and, okay, what would you like to do and, and make a schedule, okay, let's go for a walk and let's, you know, go and get some groceries, like, you know, and make it like, if this was like your, the, the, the best day of your life how would you like to spend it you are free to do whatever you want to do so ask each other to ca- ask each other that question um, you are free to do whatever you want to do how would you want you, this day to be uh, the best day of your life and and plan on that and and do it and keep each other accountable that's one nice thing about having a partner that you can say okay we haven't done this you want to do that and um, and ask each other like, how do you want me to touch you? Mm-hmm. How do you want to be loved? Uh, and wait for the answer. And if you are embarrassed or you're not into habit, then write maybe write it down and then just slip it to each other. You know, some people are like embarrassed asking these questions. Um, how would you like when it, this is all over? How would you like your your world to be different? How do you want to relate to other people differently when? Now that we know that you know this distancing it will be over, and how would you you know how would you like the world around you change your friends you how you relate to others? This is a time to kind of really be in the soup of creation and imagination it's humans are very powerful and they bring whatever whatever they imagine into life, so this would be a really good time to to write down how would you like your life to be um, and you know how in areas of health like what are the areas you know that, like are you taking good vitamins are you eating clean foods I do you drink clean water um, are you exercising do you take care of your body and uh, and and then your financing are you you know how well how else can you be doing it a lot of people are are finding themselves that that, that they are like a month away from being broke that is not great. Like now the government has been really great as to stepping up and bailing people out. But people need to have better understanding about how they how they get their financial security so they don't get into this stress. So anything that removes stress. So next time, you know, you have opportunity to make money, start saving, putting, uh, putting money uh, on the side. It's always a good idea to have money for emergency that people are just one paycheck away from being broke that's pretty scary so areas of your life you like to improve a new skill that you would like to have and uh, and if you ever get stressed or get into that uh, um, 
afraid mode and freak freak out mode, then breathe. Just breathe. Uh, lots of uh, breathing exercises are online. Uh, just find something. Uh, meditate. If you are not into meditating, then just sit down quietly and just breathe. Don't allow your thoughts to be running away for, away with you. So those are the kind of things that I would suggest. Uh, people can find me um, pretty active on Facebook. I have a Facebook group group called Soul Sexy Life. I also have a website called www.soulsexy.life. And right now there are some videos that I've made a few years back about um, uh, how to have more intimacy and how to touch each other uh, in more specific ways. Uh, there is a, a penis massage and a yoni or, 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 or vulva massage video on there, which is very specific. So if you would like to learn some new um, moves uh, that's available and I'm offering that right now uh, free of charge while this whole shamaz is going on in the world so mm-hmm. people could actually drop in there uh, so it's soulsexy.life and then you need to sign up because of course this is a, um, a video that's pretty explicit so I don't want uh, to, to be accessible very easily but, uh, but you just follow the steps and you can access that and um, and I also have a website called juliakovacs.com that's more of a general about a lot of other other offerings that I have. I work with couples, I do workshops, and uh, yeah, I encourage anybody who uh, would like to just deepen their intimacy um, and they have questions or they get stuck or they don't know how to get there. It is very difficult for people to go here, especially after year, many years perhaps of marriage or relationship and you have kind of your ways are set and now you know we all have been given this wake up call get, get out of your set ways uh, nothing is for re- for real nothing is for sure and uh, you can be sh- shaken up right now and it's like whoa all the balls are up in the air when they land how do you want it to land and 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 choose the way you want it to land. Choose the better way that would work better for you. Like make a conscious choice about it. Don't just let randomly uh, the world toss you around. You you actually we actually do have control over it. And make that choice out of trust and love in yourself first and foremost, and know how amazing we are as humans and and there's so much beauty during this crisis uh, and just focus on that and there's no need to focus on the negative and all the stuff that's going on it's going to be there all the time but collectively if we focus on the great things we can collectively create a different society where where none of our issues that we complained about will be issues again Uh, that's what I would invite people to do to make that choice uh, it's up to us it's not up to the government it's up to us to create a society where everyone is taken care of where there is no fear and uh, and we, we treat each other with loving kindness and it starts from home you know so I hear that of uh, you know childhood child abuse and 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 spousal abuse is up and we and we need to create safety in our home first and and then bring that out to the others as well so that's what um i would invite people to do how you can be you yourself be safe and kind and loving uh to your neighbors to the world around you and treat our our planet like it's our habitat like your home so you don't you you know in your home you don't create a mess and if your house is is a mess that's an indication of your own inner state so start cleaning up you know we all feel better when it's all cleaned up so start little by little and and if you need help and if you're stuck and you're anxious reach out lots of help available okay all right thank you julia it's Mm -hmm. i mean what you sound what you're saying sounds really wonderful and um thank you for joining us today okay thank you thank you for having me michael yeah
And I want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in. Um, and I do invite them to either give you, uh, um, contact you either via, via your juliacofax.com um, website or the soulsexy.life. And I do actually, I am a, a member of your Facebook group and it's a lot of fun and you uh, you put you put a lot of lot of good work in into making it a fun experience for everybody. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, I like to run it like a magazine, so it's got all kinds of fun things for everybody uh, to enjoy. And if you want to go deeper, there's lots of deeper articles. If you just want to have fun, just kind of you know, it's just collection of various things that I stumble on and regarding intimacy and sexuality and how to live really a life that's that's orgasmic and fun and titillating uh, and isn't it what all of us want you know <laughs> yeah. yeah okay all right okay thank you thank, thank you Michael. You. bye Take care. bye thank you for listening to depictions media and we will speak with everyone later on and during this um holy time uh, for for those of you who are celebrating religiously this week through this weekend, may it be safe and healthy. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.